Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, today we're going to go over the setup of this 4x6 horizontal bandsaw. This is an imported saw sold by several different suppliers under different names. Uh, it's a decent saw. It's not high quality, but with enough little uh, tweaks here and there, you can get it to do pretty good. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go over some basics here. The horizontal bandsaw has got two wheels, blade runs between, and it's holding the blade at a 45 degree angle. And then it's got two blade guides that hold the blade vertical so you can cut square. Uh, let's take a closer look at the blade guides. The blade guides are both about the same. They consist of two side rollers to hold the blade uh, vertical and hold the twist in the blade and then they got a roller in the back that supports the back of the blade during the cut so the blade won't deflect. Uh, these rollers are adjustable in and out so you can adjust the tension on the side of the blade and the whole entire assembly is adjustable in and out and up and down. And we're going to go, go on to how to adjust that. Okay, I'm going to take these blade guides off. I can do it one of two ways. I can take the whole sliding assembly off or I can just take this head off. I think it's easier just to take the whole sliding assembly off. Okay, with the blade guides off and I got tension on the blade, it's a good time to check to see how true the bandsaw is running. You can run it like that. And if you hear that noise, it's not a, necessarily a bad thing. But let me show you what's causing that. Okay, these wheels have a square ledge on the back. And all that does is stop the blade from falling off the back side. That's, that's what's making the noise. that blade is riding against that ledge. And to some degree, that's okay, but ideally, you, you need the blade slightly away from that ledge. I'm gonna leave that for now, but uh, we may fine tune that later. Okay, on the back side here, uh, this is the upper wheel axle bolt right here. And this is an adjustment to deflect the wheel to adjust the tracking. Uh, between those two bolts, you can adjust the angle of that wheel to uh, affect the blade tracking. And right now, it's pretty close, but it's rubbing the back ledge of the wheel. So let's see if we can adjust this tracking. Yeah, that did it. Pretty crude adjustment. I took some tension off the blade when I adjusted that. If I had to make a big move, it's lifting the wheel a little bit and I didn't want to have to be tightening against the tension. Kind of a trial and error. There is a science to it. That's good enough. It's just barely touching the back now. I may, I may go over that blade tracking a little more later on, but let's move on now. Okay, the purpose of the blade guys is to twist the blade and support the back of the blade in a cut. What you want is those blade guides set so that the path between the two wheels is as straight as possible. In other words, if these crescent wrenches were my blade guides, basically all you want to do is twist that blade so that you're vertical in the cut and hold it there and then adjust the wheels behind the blade so they just touch the blade. Let's take a closer look at these blade guides. That's how it would be in the saw. The blade would be going through here and there's a, the wheel to support the back of the blade. They're actually bearings. Uh, it's got a, a lock here and it slides up and down on a a guide 
very crude guide. You can adjust it in and out this way and twist it a little bit this way. And that should be all the adjustment you need. These wheels here, these pins on the top, they have a lock nut. And I've loosened one of them. And after you loosen them, you can... Can you see that? That's controlling that gap right there. They're both adjustable, so to some degree you can affect the position of the blade this way. But most of, mostly it's just to adjust the tension against that blade. Okay, I'm going to put these back in here. Okay, I got both blade guides back in there. bottom one's on a uh, bolt. It's usually left in one position. This one is adjustable depending on the width of your stock. But for now we want it in the retracted position. Okay, adjusting these blade guides is where the compromises come in. You'll notice that bottom guide is being pulled away from the wheel. That's not ideal. Also, if I can get the camera right, it's also being, being pushed this way. So, here's what, what you got to do. Okay, we need to start out with these side guides, the side roller guides, snug against the blade. They don't need to be tight. You can feel it when it hits the blade like that. I'm, there's some resistance there. Adjust it like that and then go back about an eighth of a turn. At least that's a good starting point. You should be able to turn these rollers by hand. It'll be hard to do, but you should be able to turn them. If you get them adjusted too tight and start the bandsaw, you'll know it. The splice will come around and it'll, you'll hear it. If you hear that, you can back it off some. So we got those set tight. I've already done the upper one. Okay. Like I said before, the guide should just twist the blade. It shouldn't deflect the blade. But I can't get that over toward the wheel far enough to stop it from deflecting it. This slot right here limits how far I can go, but so does the bolt. And in this case, that bolt was the limiting factor. The slot would allow me to go a little further, but the slot was stopping it, the slot for the bolt. So I filed that right there a little bit, and that moved it in another sixteenth of an inch, which is really Id close to ideal. It still could go in just a hair more. But it's way better than what it was. Okay, so you want that blade as close as you can to vertical. And you want this back wheel just barely touching the back of the blade. Now right now it's kind of deflecting the blade, but it, it's, it's to a limit. I can't go any further. Okay, now I've done the same thing to the top wheel, uh, the idler side. So let's move on to the next step. The next step is to align these guides vertically. Well, that's kind of hard to do just by eye. But if you take a, a ruler just like that, a little steel ruler, you can kind of see whether it's vertical or not. And I can see that I need to twist this way a little bit. You can loosen this a little bit and grab the whole bracket with a channel lock and turn it like that. Okay, this next step is where I really ran into problems. And 
it's due to a design flaw or some quality control issues and not being able to put the blade guides where they need to be uh, the wheel position was a little bit off etc. What I ran into when I run these blade guides high enough to where it's not overly deflecting the blade I can't go low enough in the in this gap here. In other words, right now I am. You can see it deflects that paper. So I'm cutting through the stock. But what I ran into is to get it, there's an adjustment right here to stop that from going down. What I ran into over here, the casting right here was hitting this right there. Still real close, but it was hitting it. What I'd had to do, and the, the guard was also hitting right here. So what I had to do, first of all, I got to leave the guard off it. The second, I ground this out right here. I'll show you. I just took a disc grinder and ground some of that casting off. And that allows the bandsaw to come down far enough to both trip the switch. Of course, this is adjustable here, but more importantly, it, it allowed that blade to go into the slot right there far enough to cut through the steel. Okay, before I go any further, remember I said you'll know if these are too tight? Watch that blade. See it deflecting a little bit? That's where these rollers are too tight. That's hitting the weld. You can adjust either one of these. Probably a good way to adjust it when you hear it hitting the weld, you back off a little bit. That weld is oversized. It really should be the same thickness as the blade. Okay, remember earlier I said uh, we'd probably have to go back and adjust the blade tracking again. You'll notice on this upper wheel, the blade's hanging off just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that right there or not. Zoom in on it. Yeah. Now the bottom wheel, is, it's about in the right location. So I'm going to adjust that tracking. So you go back in. Now you don't want it back far enough where it's hitting that ledge but that's about where it needs to be. You may have noticed I had an uh, add-on steel plate here. And the only reason I did that is because it better supports the workout next to the blade where you can clamp shorter stock. Pretty handy. But I've milled this square right here. It's also handy for squaring the blade up. And it looks like this, to, to square it up, after you've done everything else, you move this one way or the other. I believe I'm going to leave it alone because it looks, looks very square. I highly recommend this. Uh, it could be quarter inch. The reason I made it three eighths is because I wanted to thread into it. But you could put countersink on this side and put the nut on this side. Uh, but whatever you do, this is pretty thin casting right there. Put some uh, big washers behind that to support it so you don't break your casting. You may have also noticed the wood stand. That wood stand was just so it would slide underneath my workbench. There's no particular advantage other than that. So 
something to watch out for. That plate right there, if it touches the blade, it'll dull the teeth on one side. I had to shorten that plate because <laughs> I didn't think it would matter, but uh, it dulled the blade really, really fast. And if you wear the teeth off of one side of the blade, it won't cut straight. Anyway, uh, let's try a piece of, I've got this square. Oh, after you get this square, uh, put a scribe line on that. That way, if you want to change the angle of your cut, you can go right back to square. Uh, here's another uh, nice thing to do. I put a T-handle underneath here. So that I could change the angle of my stop, the, or my uh, fence, without having to put a wrench under the bottom there. It's, that's really hard to, hard to get to on the original design. So I just made a T-handle that threads onto that bolt. Something I didn't cover is blade tension. You don't need to put a, a pliers on it or anything, but it needs to be fairly snug. To some degree that'll affect your tracking. Uh, it shouldn't, but things kind of deflect. But it needs to be fairly tight. Okay, I got an aluminum block in here just to check squareness. I've got a vertical. I want to make sure I'm square this way. I could have laid it down horizontal too. I have used 4x4 four four tubing and that works pretty good. This aluminum will cut fairly fast. I can tell this is going to be fairly square. We, won't, we probably won't have to make any adjustments. But if you're out of square this way, you would twist your blade guides accordingly. If you're out of square this way, you adjust that backstop. But it's going to be it's going to be very square. Okay, let's see if it shuts off on its on its own, cuts all the way through. Hmm. Might have been better if it went down a little little bit lower. I might be able to adjust it down just a hair more. Yeah, I got some clearance there. Good deal. I'll just adjust this stop right here. Well, now I'm going to have to figure out some kind of blade guard. I can't use the original because it was hitting right here and limiting the travel. And I got to have that extra travel to make it shut off because I moved these blade guides in a more appropriate position. Now, if, you've, if, if you're running into the same problem on your saw, you got a choice. You can either move these guides back down to make, to make it uh, shut off, so you can raise that back up, or you can do what I'm, I'm doing now. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to put these guides in the right place, at least on this particular saw, there's no way to put them in the right place and have it still shut off. So I'm going to build a new guard. It's going to be, I don't need to cover this down here. I never put my hands down there. What I would do is possibly grab it right here and catch my hand on that blade right there. So I'm going to make sure and cover, cover this end and, and maybe down to about here. And that'd be the most likely places to get cut. Okay, I haven't got much in the way of sheet metal tools. Let's see what we can do here. Cut that out of there first.
Okay, these are 832 screws. I just used the, I drilled that with 3 sixteenths. And I don't remember, this is 9 30 seconds, I think, but this is a tap size drill. I just used the 3 sixteenths as a uh, pilot to transfer the hole position. Not a whole lot of casting there. I probably should have put a tab and put a screw on the outside. This is easier. Cleaning this off with MEK. Well, if you go to the trouble to rebuild your guard, put a little tabs on there and screw from the outside. I, it's really close to the edge right here. Right here I had to drill another hole because I went through the side of the casting there. Oh yeah. That way I won't get my hands caught in it. Well, that about wraps it up. But I got one more trick up my sleeve here. And I saw this on, uh, I don't know if I saw it on YouTube or Facebook or someplace like that. Somebody modified, or somebody made this here. Somebody came up with this idea. I got a piece of pipe here. It looks like four inch, I guess. Four and a half on the outside. Anyway, doesn't really matter on the size too much. But I'm going to cut it in half like that. Okay, probably asking, what the heck's he going to do with that? Check this out. Want to hold that little piece there? I need to adjust my switch some more. It's pretty slick, huh? I just ground ground a little bevel on that so it clamped on the very tip first. Well, that about wraps up the 4x6 horizontal bandsaw tune-up. Uh, you don't have to do all those things. You can move those blade guides down so you don't have to modify it and put a new guard on it. Uh, this is ideally the way it should work, but uh, it worked perfectly good before. It was just harder on the blades. Uh, I'd say I increased the blade life considerably. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and be sure and subscribe.